in the ongoing investigation into the deadly shooting at Rob Elementary. What the mayor had to say about DPS leadership is still ahead. And intense flames at a far west side home may stem from a cookout. What the fire department says you can do to have a safe family barbecue. That's coming up this noon. Our big ridge fire pressure moves closer to Texas. We could see some record challenging heat by Saturday and Sunday. Your forecast straight ahead. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, the mayor of Uvalde launching some harsh criticisms in the wake of the deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. Yeah, Mayor Don McLaughlin told CNN he thinks the investigation into law enforcement's response during the shooting may involve a cover up. And he says he's losing confidence in some Texas leaders. I think it's a cover up on, uh, on, on DPI. On, they're covering up. Uh, McGraw's covering up for for who? or maybe his agencies or, you know, maybe he told the story he told that, you know, it's hard, you know, what do they say? The, the, it's always hard when you tell a lie, you have to keep telling a lie. I'm not saying he's lying. Maybe he was misled with the information. But he, he hasn't got. changed his story, right? No, Since but that also, Friday, he did, and then he did the Senate hearing. And, yeah, and I think that which was, a, which was, which was even more, he was even more emphatic about Chief Arredondo being the man who was, responsible for everything here, blaming everything on him. Well, again, I, you know, you know, every agency in that hallway is going to have to share the blame. And like I said, again, I'll go back to when have you ever seen a federal or state law enforcement officer take right. their cues from local law enforcement? DPS Director Stephen McGraw previously told the Senate's the Texas Senate that the police response was in quote adject failure, end quote, and placed a lot of the blame on school police chief Pete Arredondo. Arredondo is still on leave from the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District. He resigned from his city council seat earlier this month. More than a week after the San Antonio migrant tragedy that claimed the lives of 53 people, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office releasing the identities of some of the victims. 47 victims have been identified. Got a list of their names on KSAT.com. Their ages range from 13 to 55 years old. They include 22 people from Mexico, 19 from Guatemala, and six from Honduras. The medical examiner's office is still trying to confirm the potential identities of the six remaining victims. And a summertime cookout appears to be what burned a far west Bear County family out of their home. Firefighters believe that embers left burning in a barbecue pit set fire to the home earlier this morning. It set flames and smoke high into the air in a neighborhood near Loop 1604 and Petranco Road. And as Katrina Weber tells us, it also filled some neighbors with fear. Dark skies turned orange over the 900 block of Stable Glen. The effects of a raging house fire that broke out around 4.30 this morning. Bear County fire crews got there as soon as they could and immediately went on the attack. Where we tried to go in and put the fire out, we were met with heavy fire. The intensity of it caused firefighters to make a quick retreat and work strictly from the outside. They later realized that is where it appears the fire started, outside on a backyard deck. There's a barbecue pit that may not have been extinguished completely. A woman who lived in the home told me they had recently had a cookout. She and two children managed to escape the fire safely. Firefighters say their barking dog woke them up, but that pet may not have made it out. Putting out the fire took crews about an hour. With these homes being so close together, some of the neighbors were worried about their own safety and they got out on their own. Later, they were able to return, but the family lost everything, most likely due to a family barbecue. If you are grilling, uh, be sure the fire is out. Keep the embers away from the house. Don't don't just put them in your trash can. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on the deadly mass shooting at the 4th of July parade in Highland Park outside Chicago. The death toll climbing to seven, and we are learning more about the how the suspected gunman who allegedly carried out this brutal attack and senseless attack. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more. The 
suspected gunman who police say opened fire on parade goers during the July 4th celebration in Highland Park, Illinois, expected to appear before judge on Wednesday morning, where prosecutors are expected to ask that he be held without bond. Robert E. Cremo III faces seven first-degree murder charges in an attack that authorities say he planned for weeks, even down to his disguise, where according to investigators, he dressed in women's clothing to escape. Investigators do believe he did this to conceal his facial tattoos and his identity and help him during the escape. Police say the suspected gunman climbed up a fire escape ladder onto the roof of a business where he fired close to 70 rounds. ABC's Alex Perez talking with witnesses who barely escaped. So there was a bullet that literally almost hit your head. It hit my dad, but it missed my head. The rampage injured more than 30 people, claiming the lives of seven, including two-year-old Aiden McCarthy's parents, Irina and Kevin, seen in this picture from a GoFundMe post. Survivors Dana and Gregory Ring telling ABC News about the moment another parade goer handed them the toddler in the aftermath of the chaos. Every time I tried to ask him what his name was, the response he gave to me in return was, a mama dead to come get me soon. Mommy's car come to get me soon. Two, three hours later, a detective who had our number called, and then he took the little boy to where families were being reunited, and then he told me he was eventually reunited with his grandparents. As police work to uncover a motive, growing questions about missed red flags. Illinois police say the suspect passed four background checks in 2020 and 2021, despite two prior police incidents. In 2019, when he threatened to take his own life, and then that September, when police say they confiscated knives after family members accused him of threatening to kill people. And that high-powered rifle that police say was used in this attack is legal in parts of Illinois, but not here in Highland Park. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Highland Park, Illinois. Back here in South Texas, the Frio County Sheriff's Office received several emergency calls over the last few days for apparent illegal drug overdoses. The alert was posted Monday on their Facebook page. Anyone in possession of cocaine is urged to dispose of it immediately. As it appears, there is a certain batch of the illegal drug being sold and once consumed causes death. The sheriff's office is trying to track the source of the illegal drug. FCSO is also asking people if they have any information to contact the sheriff's office at the number you see there on your screen, 830-334-3311. And the city of Kerrville is beginning lane closures today on Loop 534 between Highway 27 Memorial Boulevard and Bandera Highway 173. The lane will be closed for city contractors to install utility lines safely. The lane closures are expected to last three and a half weeks. It'll be from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. daily. Temporary traffic signals will be placed around the work site so that vehicles can use an alternate route. Drivers who use Loop 534 regularly should expect delays in their commutes. The city will provide updates to these closures as needed. District 3 is hosting part two of their property tax workshop today. The workshops are put together to teach property owners how to protest their property taxes. The Barrow County Tax Assessor Collector's Office will be at the workshop. It'll happen at Pre-K 4SA South, that is on South New Braunfels from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And if you have any questions about this event, you can call the District 3 Field Office at 210-207-0969. Still coming up this half hour, one of the Spurs draft picks is now a well-off 19-year-old. There are mirrors with more on what that means coming up. San Antonio's original Latin Film Festival is returning and it's giving some local folks a chance to shine. What you can expect to see if you plan to attend after the break. Well, San Antonio's original Latinx Film Festival returned this week at the historic Guadalupe Theater on the west side. The 43rd annual Cine Festival San Antonio will feature 85 films, including 22 from San Antonio and 24 from the Lone Star State. Tiffany Huerta says a look at the different films showing this year and what it means to those involved. <laughs> It is a 18th century horror story uh, taking place around the Spanish missions. Mark Zuniga is excited to show his first feature film, Cuerpo, at the 43rd annual Cine Festival San Antonio. We shot in the 
mostly at the missions um, and some of the open ranges around San Antonio area. The cast and crew of this film, all from San Antonio. It is my future, my land, and I will build it myself. I've submitted it to other festivals, but it just never felt right, right, because uh, it's a, a bit of a niche genre that we're working in here. Um, and then with the story we're trying to tell and the history we're exploring, it definitely feels like this is the place to show that first. Cine Festival will have a variety of films from comedy, horror, and documentaries. Films were shot not only in the U.S., but internationally. We're seeing a lot more LGBTQ+ content, which is great. A lot of the young filmmakers are, you know, going into sci-fi. David Damien Figueroa is part of two films, Abuelo and Pepe Serna, Life is Art. It's about his, his struggle and his successes and the ups and downs of life and how he just stays positive. David says the festival is opening the doors for Latinos. We're working with a um, an industry that really doesn't, at this point, still does not recognize us as viable directors, actors, producers, and it's changing, but we need to do more. And I think one of the, the, uh, the amazing things about San Antonio is they have a, a really amazing uh, film festival, and, and we're re really proud to be here. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And for the first time in two years, fans of Tejano music will be able to enjoy the 42nd annual Tejano Music Awards live and in person. The announcement was made official during a press conference today, and it featured a taste of what's to come with a special performance by three-time Grammy winner Sunny Salceda. Privileged and honor to be part of the Tejano Music Awards. The award ceremony is set for November 26 at San Antonio's Techport Arena. Outside with live cam. Okay, so Patty's here. You're in a different suit. I'm in a different suit, but it sure does feel like deja vu all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you changed, both yeah, of you. Thank you. I took a shower, too. <laughs> well, uh, you know, D David, it, things are going to change, but not in a good way oh. because it oh. gets even hotter from here. Oh. I'm sorry to say it. 92 degrees right now. We are on our way up to 100 again this afternoon. The aquifer is just falling like a rock. It's down another foot today to 635.1. We are not in good shape there. And the pollen counts just mold slow at 330. We'll talk about some big time heat this weekend. We're also going to look at some of the rivers and streams. Where are we at as far as uh, things dry up? We'll take a look coming up. I think we just sum this up with uh, one simple word or two. It's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Or three, it is hot. Or it's very hot. Pretty much. <laughs> it, we've got to break out the thesaurus to find synonyms for hot. Have you done Sizzling? that yet? Sizzling? <laughs> Not yet, but I will. Okay. You I will. I'm going to work on it. Uh, one thing sizzling that we've been, is good. Like sizzling's sizzling. That's good. Apt. Like that. It's scorching. Uh, scorching. There you go. All those adjectives we'll be able to use this weekend. And one thing we've been watching. Uh, the rivers, where are we at here? And, uh, you know, the, the flow, that's really kind of the important number here, the stream flow. Frio River out near Concan is at 3.9 cubic feet per second. That's the lowest step since September 2011, which means it is barely flowing at this point. There's still some water there, but it's just not flowing. And you look at some of the other rivers, of course, Guadalupe River, Spring Branch, uh, latest check, this was near zero. Okay, so this is on the west side of Canyon Lake, but it's just not flowing there. That's the lowest since 2018 for that particular area. And then as you get into New Braunfels, uh, the Comal, which tends to be pretty steady, the, the springs there are pretty reliable. So the stream flow is at 129, 129 cubic feet per second, which is the lowest since 2014. But that's still at a, a fine rate if you want to go tubing. And the Guadalupe there in New Braunfels is doing okay because it's on the other side of Canyon Lake. But we're still watching these numbers closely. They are going to continue to fall because of this drought situation that we're in. So if you have plans to go tubing this weekend, just know the flow is not huge, uh, especially in some of those spots out west. Uh, the reservoir levels uh, around the area, we look at those two. Medina Lakes at 14%, Canyon Lake at 92%, Show Canyon at 36%, Amistad at 35%. All these numbers are falling too. If you look over the last year, Medina is down 26 feet, 
Canyon Lake, which is pretty steady level, but it's even down a foot. Chokes down five uh, feet and Amistad down 12 feet. Bottom line, we need some rain and there's not a lot in the forecast. Uh, maybe, maybe middle part of or end of next week. That's all we can look at right now. In the meantime, it is, uh, it's going to be the heat that's going to be the, the main story here. 91 degrees at the airport. Feels like 95 when you factor in that dew point of 68. And the cloud cover, well, there is some of it. Uh, you got to go south and east to San Antonio. Starting to see some of those fair weather cumulus clouds pop up. No rain with these, though. There is one little shower east of Victoria, but any kind of shower activity we see today will likely stay east of us, and it's not going to last very long. That high pressure is kind of squashing everything. We may get a few clouds in here this afternoon. Temperature-wise, we're sitting at 90 degrees in Holotus, 91 Rio Medina, 87 Canyon Lake, 93 right now in New Braunfels. Heat index is there. Feels like 95 here in town. Feels like 97 in Stenson. Already feels like 98 in New Braunfels. These heat index values will go up above 100 here very soon. And there is the concern. Uh, the heat index around 2 o'clock, around 102. Heat index, which is this top number here, will probably be around 104 here in San Antonio by 4, 5, 6 o'clock. So be careful out there. This is still that kind of uh, really dangerous territory, and that's not, it's not just us. A large portion of the country today. Look at the forecast heat index in Nashville at 5 o'clock today, 113. 107, the forecast heat index in Little Rock. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings have been posted in those areas as high pressure really starts to build in. And it actually moves closer to us as we get into the weekend, which is why those temperatures are going to be much, much warmer, uh, I think, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. These are forecast model numbers, but uh, I think well into the 100s for much of Texas will be a possibility. So our forecast for today, 99 at 3 o'clock, will be around 101 by 5 p.m., and then down into the 80s by 10, 11, and uh, midnight. The extended forecast, 103 Friday, 104 Saturday, 105 Sunday, some record challenging heat over the weekend, guys. This can't last forever. It'll it won't. The rain will eventually come. Someday. Someday. Yep. <laughs> All right, thanks, Justin. Yep. Spurs probably glad they're going to Vegas. Might be a little cooler out Yeah, there. right. I mean, what's the Vegas temperature is going to be there, Justin? Uh, probably about the same. Oh, really? about 110, maybe. Yeah, well, they're going to be inside a lot. But it's a dry heat. <laughs> exactly. A dry heat is definitely <laughs> much better. Coming up, the Spurs Summer League team is all ready, and head coach Mitch Johnson has to try to balance getting 17 players some playing time. Plus, in the WNBA, fever rookie Nalissa Smith continues to play some great basketball. Coming up. excited I mean uh, you know he's been uh, been through a lot hamstring and other stuff but see, to be able to see him on the course good uh, we hung out yesterday went to go see the minions so it was good good to, good to see him back it was funny I mean uh, I enjoyed it I want to go see it again so I'm gonna see it again Spurs Blake Wesley is happy that his fellow rookie and movie watching partner Jeremy Sohan is back with the team in big board sports Spurs number one draft pick Jeremy Sohan is back with the squad after missing some time due to the coronavirus. The ninth overall pick was back on the floor yesterday with the Summer League Spurs, but he still has to condition and work his way back into shape. Silver and Black will play in the Las Vegas Summer League with their first game coming up on Friday. This year's roster will include the Spurs' two other first-round picks in Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, along with last year's draft picks Josh Primo and Joe Wieskamp. Spurs assistant coach Mitch Johnson will serve as head coach of the Summer League squad as he tries to teach his team the Spurs way of doing things. It's interesting. It's a juggling act of trying to give enough structure and organization so there are roles, but give enough freedom so they dictate the roles, right? This is, Summer League is different than the season. So there's a part of us that want them to tell us what it should be, but it's our job that it's not a free-for-all on the circus, so it's, uh, it's a juggling act for sure. Yesterday, the Spurs announced the signing of guard Blake Wesley. The Spurs drafted him with their third and final first-round selection at number 25 overall. Wesley played one season at the University of Notre Dame, 35 games. He led the Fighting Irish in scoring with 14.4 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 2.4 assists in 29.4 minutes as a freshman. Yesterday was a huge day and certainly a dream come true for him. Uh, it feels good. It's a dream come true. Uh, been thinking about this since I was like five years old. So to be able to sign a contract uh, is good, a blessing, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity. 
so can't take it for granted. So it's a blessing. It's been good. So um, first summer league practice, we we competed. Uh, I like it out here. I like to compete. Uh, a lot of guys out here uh, are strong, fast. So Josh Primo, Joe Wieskamp. So to be able to compete with them is, at a high level is good for me. So. The Spurs announced yesterday they have signed Isaiah Roby after the forward was waived by Oklahoma City. The 6'8", 230-pound four-year veteran appeared in 45 games with the Thunder last season, averaging just over 10 points and uh, 10 and a half points and over four and a half rebounds a game, while shooting over 51 percent and over 44 percent from three-point range. Roby was originally selected by the Pistons as the 45th pick overall in the 2019 NBA draft. So here's the Spurs Vegas Summer League schedule. Friday they'll play the Cavaliers. 4 p.m. at the Cox Pavilion. Sunday and Monday, they'll face the Warriors and Rockets at the Thomas and Mack. Then on Thursday, the 14th, it's back to the Cox Pavilion for a 2 p.m. matchup with the Hawks. And last night in the WNBA, the Seattle Storm beat the Indiana Fever 95-73. Fever rookie forward Delissa Smith at 14 points and four rebounds in 33 minutes. She shot four for 13 overall and two of five from three point range. For the season, the East Central alum is averaging 12.8 points per game and a team high eight rebounds per contest. I just laugh at about the minutes. So when the Spurs are on the road this year, Papa would like gather up his little kids, right? <laughs> his grandkids, his little kids, and, and take him to the movies. We'll take whatever animated movie. What cartoons you're playing? There you go, guys. Have fun. <laughs> Listen, you, those kids make a lot more money than no, all of us. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, they're gonna grow up fast though in Vegas when they start playing NBA style basketball. Thanks, Larry. See you next hour. <laughs> All right, well, you may be seeing lower gas prices the next time you fill up your tank. Well, enjoy them while you can, why you could be feeling that pain at the pump once again. And light or dark, but most of all durable. Finding the right kind of wooden floors can be tough with so many on the market. How do you know which is best? Today at 5, Marilyn Moore shares options that can stand the test of scratches, stains, and even all those little pet paw prints. It's a 12 on your side report, and it's today at 5. Welcome back. A program that protects immigrants brought to the U.S. illegally as children for, from deportation now in jeopardy. The legality of DACA questioned today in a federal appeals court in New Orleans. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program started 10 years ago. Right now, more than 600,000 immigrants are enrolled in the program. Last July, a Texas district judge ruled that DACA was unlawful and blocked the government from approving new applicants. The Justice Department filed a notice to appeal the ruling. It's not clear if the, co uh, the case will eventually go to the Supreme Court. Some drivers are paying less to fill up as gas prices dip, according to AAA. The national average for a gallon of gas is down eight cents from last week to four dollars and eighty cents. That's because there's lower demand right now. However, that could change this month. July, usually the busiest month of the summer driving season. Right now, the most expensive gas in the U.S. is on the West Coast. The least expensive gas is in the South. And there could be more flight disruptions this summer, at least according to United Airlines. The company told its staff that there are more summer flights than air traffic controllers could handle. And the airline expects the U.S. aviation system to remain challenged this summer. United says the situation is particularly bad in New York and Florida. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg met with the heads of airlines last month and said yesterday that he disagrees. Buttigieg says air traffic control staffing is not to blame for most delays and cancellations this summer. He says there are other issues at play, like airlines pushing pilots into early retirement. All right, here's a live look outside right now. 93 degrees. It is this week. Like, don't you just want to take a flight out of Texas, maybe go somewhere cooler? With no, <laughs> yeah, especially when you see these numbers, Justin is going to fire up. It's going up, 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 and up. So many numbers in the seven-day forecast. You know, the scary part is it's only early July. We still have to get through August and really even parts of September, too. We know how it works around here. We've already accumulated 27 days at 100 degrees or above. We average 18 a year, just to give you some perspective. So we are well on our way to uh, achieving the gold medal there. Of course, 2009, we had 59 100 degree days. We are above that pace, at least as it stands right now. In 2011, we had 57 days, 41 in 2013. 
Uh, we'll likely add to that today. The forecast high is 101. Actually, we're going to put together a stretch here of triple digit days, probably through Tuesday of next week. Most of us right around 100, if not a little bit above. Carrizo Springs 102, 103 in Pearsall, and it will feel warmer than that later today with added humidity. Temperatures around the state right now, 96 in Abilene, it's 95 in Dallas, 91 in Houston, 89 in Corpus Christi. So we're all in the same boat here in the Lone Star State. Heat and humidity rules the day, and uh, temperatures will again be up near 100 for a lot of places. As far as rain goes, there is some rain down there across uh, the coast of Louisiana. Little disturbance there. That is trying to work west, but it's uh, running into some sinking air. It does not look like we're going to get much out of that. And then some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms out for West Texas today. We'll talk more about how hot it could be this weekend. That forecast is coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine, advanced U.S. weapons arriving on the battlefield. ABC's James Longland reporting that those weapons could already be making a difference in the fight against Russian forces. A special inside look at the new U.S. weapons now arriving in Ukraine. HIMARS are some of Ukraine's most highly valued weapons. They're terrified, really, of the Russians finding out where they are. So we've been taking them to this secret location. In the wide open spaces of this vast country, Ukrainian forces use these woods for cover. These are the rockets being loaded onto the U.S. HIMARS high mobility artillery rocket systems. These are the weapons that Ukraine says are making all the difference in its war for the very simple reason that they fire further than anything Ukraine currently has in its artillery. The other important detail is that they're truck mounted, which means once they're fired, these guys can move. We can use them to find targets in Russian controlled territory that no other weapon can get to, this HIMAR commander tells me. We've hit command centers and ammunition stores. The strike is part of the battle for the Donbass, where Russian forces have recently claimed control of Luhansk, the northern province of the region. The fighting there fierce as Ukrainian forces try to fend off Russia as it looks to take the rest of the Donbass. Key Ukrainian-held cities in the region coming under attack. In Slovyansk, Russian missiles destroying a local market. And the city of Kramatorsk facing intense shelling as Russian forces move in on Donetsk. And the Ukrainians will be hoping that these HIMARS make them better able to defend Donetsk. That's the second half of the Donbass region, which is now in Vladimir Putin's sights. James Longman, ABC News, in the Kharkiv region of Ukraine. Well, the investigation into last year's attack at the U.S. Capitol continues next week. A House panel will hold another hearing on July 12th. It will go over evidence on how the mob of people assembled and how their efforts were financed. There are no expected witnesses. So far, there have been more than 800 arrests on charges related to the Capitol chaos. Investigators are still looking for information on possible suspects and whether they're connected to the former president, Donald Trump. A rare find is headed to the auction block. However, if you want the artifact, you're gonna need a huge area to keep it in and of course, several million dollars. What is it? We'll tell you. And the Astros are on a roll. That's the best of the majors right now. Larry Ramirez with more on that coming up in sports. Well, Stranger Things continues to break records. Season four of the popular Netflix original just nabbed a coveted honor. Details after the break. Hello, everyone. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. A Florida ice cream company, Big Olaf Creamery, is being blamed for a listeria outbreak across 10 states. The CDC is advising consumers to throw out any ice cream from the company. There have been 22 hospitalizations and one death. That according to the CDC, Big Olaf has contacted stores to stop selling the brand. Meanwhile, according to Moody's Analytics, U.S. households built up $2.7 trillion in savings from the start of the pandemic until the end of last year. But now due to inflation, consumers are now dipping into their savings. The personal savings rate was 5.4% in May. That is far below the record of 34% in April 2020. That according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And Tesla's working on a new feature that will scan the road and automatically adjust the suspension for rough roads and potholes. The comfort setting will be part of a software update for Tesla vehicles with adaptive suspension. There will also be a green light chime. This will alert you when the light changes. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan.
The latest season of Stranger Things hit a new milestone. I know you've watched it. Mm. <laughs> the Netflix series has over a billion hours mm. in viewership. It's the first English language series to ever do so with 1.15 billion hours of viewing time over its first 28 days of release. It is the second series in any language behind the Korean hit show Squid Games. And we can't tell you anything about it because Justin just started watching it. He's closing his eyes right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, this may sound like something out of a Stranger Things episode, but it is real. A gargo Ooh. Gargosaurus skeleton wow. will be up for sale during an auction later this month. It's a type of dinosaur that roamed the Earth 77 million years ago. It measures nearly 10 feet tall, 22 feet long. The skeleton was found in 2018 in the Judith River Formation in Montana. It was preserved due to the sediments of the river ecosystem. The dinosaur is a <laughs> close relative of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Got that one. But slightly <laughs> smaller in size, a typical adult male could weigh up to two tons. Uh, if you're interested, it's going to go up for auction on July 28th. It's estimated to sell for millions, somewhere between five and eight million dollars. I know you have that kind of money. Ooh, if it's weighing two tons, it's eating a lot. All right. <laughs> These otters have the right idea. They're cooling off in a bucket of ice at the Oregon Zoo. Yeah, the trio of otters includes an American <laughs> River otter named Tilly and her two adopted pups, Flora and Hobson. They uh, were given to the chance to jump in the bucket, roll around, wrestle with each other, and of course, eat some ice cubes. They look pretty happy out there. <laughs> How many times have you ever seen an otter eat an ice cube? There you go. When it's hot. That's pretty funny. Like it is today. That's mm -hmm. good stuff right there. I could, uh, you know, a bucket of ice might not be a bad thing for us to jump into. <laughs> so a few people watching right now, man, I'm jealous. I don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Uh, the way this heat's going, man, uh, temperature's already into the low 90s. Uh, potentially mid 90s here next couple of hours and then we're going to be up close to 100 this afternoon 91 so far today 78 was low this morning that is above average will be above average again today 102 is the record set back in 1998 we may get close to that if possible uh, the record low is 65 set back in 1972 how hot will we go i think that's the big question by the time we get into saturday and sunday another look at that seven day forecast it's coming up Think 2021 February. What happened? Oh, yes. We were really, really, really We were really cold. Really, 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 really. I don't know if we want to think about that either. <laughs> I mean, that's because. Gotta do something. I mean, wow, you can think the about middle. the otters in the, in the ice bucket. Yeah. You Maybe, know, I, I don't know. I'm thinking like 70 degrees. I'm oh, okay. Hawaii. <laughs> that works too. The beach. Okay. Anything. Yes. Uh, think happy thoughts for a long time because we've got seven days ahead of us that are going to be pretty brutal. Uh, we look at on the rainfall. It's not good. You know that. But I think what's astounding here is we have 5.11 inches for the yearly total here in San Antonio. Uh, you know, we can pick that up in one event. And that's all we've seen so far this year. We're nearly a foot behind average. Del Rio, over six inches below average. Austin had 14 inches this year, but still down four inches. So uh, it gives you an idea just how bad the situation is. We had some clouds this morning. Those cleared out. We've got clear skies now. And with clear skies, there is no reason why that temperature will not get up to around 100 this afternoon. 91 right now. Now, there are some clouds off to our south and east. Uh, but as long as those stay out, I think these temperatures will uh, be taking some big jumps here in the coming hours. 93 in the brothels feels like 98. 91 in Seguin feels like 95. The heat index here in San Antonio right now is 95. And the heat index around burning stage 88, 92 is what it feels like in Kerrville. Heat index forecast, though, by, say, 2 o'clock, we could see that heat index up around 102, maybe near 104 by 4, 5, 6 o'clock. It's kind of on the high end of things, but uh, that starts to get into that danger territory. So we got to watch out here. It's one of those days, and it only gets worse because humidity sticks around another couple days before it kind of dries out some over the weekend. But that combination of humidity and heat, of uh, that heat index up near 105. It's just not something you want to mess with. Current temperatures, 95 in Oklahoma City. It's 90 in St. Louis, 95 in Memphis. That's a place that's going to be baking today underneath the Ridge 5 pressure. 
it is still Seattle and Portland who are the big winners this summer. 62 in Seattle right now, and they probably won't get all that much warmer today. Beautiful weather up there. High pressure builds in, it strengthens, and it's going to crank up the heat. Heat advisories posted from Dallas to Oklahoma City over to Cincinnati and Atlanta. Excessive heat warnings for those areas in pink, and those heat indices could go as high as 115 in a few spots. With this rich high pressure, everything's going up and around it, so there's severe weather up across parts of Ohio along the fringes of this ridge of high pressure. Uh, but for us, we're still very much underneath its grasp and it moves closer to Texas by the time we get into the weekend. These are forecast numbers from one of our models. So I think these are a little high, but it gives you a general idea for the uh, forecast temperature on Saturday, maybe near 103, 104 here in San Antonio, 108 in Dallas. It gets even hotter as we get into Sunday. Big time temperatures here uh, for the Lone Star State. I'd say Saturday, Sunday, Monday, kind of the days we've got to really watch. KSAT 12 hour forecast 100 by 4 o'clock, 101 by 5 p.m., 100 on uh, at 6, 97 at 7 p.m. Mostly clear skies here, and we'll see some breezy winds out of the south and east. We'll start off with a little bit of cloud cover tomorrow, uh, but otherwise, it's the same story. 101 Thursday, 103 Friday, and then some near record heat, if not record heat, on Sunday. The record's 103. We're forecasting 105. The Whew. positive thing is it could be worse. It could be 113. True. So, it has I been mean, that hot. We'll take wow. it. Well, it's crazy. Wow. Positive. Think positive. David Sears is stunned right now. <laughs> 113. So the Spurs are getting out of the heat, going to Vegas. Yeah. And they got one of their rookies back. So... Two good things for them. Yeah, Jeremy uh, Sohan, what a bummer for him. You get drafted, yeah. you get into town, then you test positive for COVID-19. <laughs> I mean, that just had to bum the young man out. But he's got to be happy because he is back on the court with the Spurs. And a member of SAFC was named to the USL Championship Team of the Week. Coming up. After getting the holiday weekend off, the Spurs went back to work yesterday, getting their young players ready for the NBA Summer League games in Las Vegas. The good news is that number one draft pick, ninth overall, Jeremy Sohan, was back on the court after testing positive for COVID-19 last week after arriving in San Antonio. Now the question is, will he be available to play in the game starting this Friday? It's good to see him. He's doing well, able to... Uh, come to Vegas and be with the team and be a part of it. So excited for him. It was a, it was a quick departure after the introduction. I can't keep up with the return to out of health protocols, whatever that process is. I think he's in it still, whatever that is. He's obviously out of protocols, but there's obviously a ramp up and a cardiac and a clearance deal. I don't know where he is in that. But I guess uh, with everything you know about him, he'll, he'll get up to speed pretty quickly. I yeah, I would think so. I mean, if anything, right, he'll be working with our people out there, whatever capacity ends up being. He plays 30 minutes, he's training with them, right? It could be anything. Rookie Blake Wesley signed his first pro contract yesterday, and now the young man is ready to play in his first professional games. The 19-year-old is already familiar with the Vegas Summer League. So I'm excited, I mean, uh, to play in Summer League. Uh, I went to Summer League three years in a row to watch the games. I seen uh, Zaire Williams, uh, Kate Cunningham play last year. So to be able to play this year against them is going to be good, going to be fun. Uh, just learning, I mean, uh, it's going to be my first Summer League, so it's not going to be perfect. I got to learn, got some games I'll have a good game, some games I'll have bad games. Got to learn from it and uh, just want to get better. So it's the main thing. Here's the Spurs Summer League schedule. They left for Las Vegas last night, arriving there around 10 p.m. They'll open play Friday at 4 with the Cavaliers. Congratulations to San Antonio FC defender Fabian Garcia, who was named to the United Soccer League Championship Team of the Week. He was a main contributor in two dominant defensive efforts this past week, in which SAFC defended its first place standing in the Western Conference with victories against both Tulsa and Charleston Battery at Toyota Field. SAFC held both teams just one total goal on Tuesday and Saturday night's 2-1 and 2-0 victories. Houston Astros remain the hottest team in baseball, and they had to come back from an 0-2 hole to do so. Alex Bregman 
hit this two run shot in the bottom of the fifth to give the Astros their first lead of the game six to four and they would stay on top the rest of the way thanks to the long ball Houston takes it nine to seven for their eighth win in a row. Now the Texas Rangers are going the opposite way. Bottom of the 10th at Baltimore tied at nine. Cedric Mullins doubles to left center field to score a run and the birds walk off the Rangers 10 to nine. The Rangers third straight loss and in Texas League ball the Rough Riders beat up the missions 10 to one. Today is an off day for San Antonio. So there's four 19 year olds <laughs> headed to Vegas. How about Ooh. that? <laughs> Well, it's like a sophomore team in college, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. They're all yeah. in the NBA. You know, well, the NBA has certainly changed, hasn't it? Yeah. You know you're getting old when 19 sounds really young. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Water slides, <laughs> table tennis, and brunch. Oh, Ooh, you got to have yes. some food thrown in there somewhere, right? Got yeah. some French toast coming up here. Look at that. Yes, indeed. Yes, then Ashley Griggs, owner of Piece of Cake, is here. We're going to do a French toast station, but more importantly, what makes a good French toast? What's the key? A good French toast is a, you usually need a really good thick eggy bread like brioche or challah, and it just makes all the difference. Okay. We're going to talk about this, how you can get this to come to your home, making some great desserts on top of that. What to wash it down with? How about a pina colada? Nothing says mm. something like that. And Gerardo Carvajal from the Family Cortez restaurants. And what are we making here? Hey, we got a special pina colada for you. Okay. We got, got rum chata, uh -huh. cinnamon, sticks. cinnamon sticks, okay. coconut, and of course. All right, and this is to all celebrate National Pina Colada right. Day, which is coming up at all of the La Familia All of the La Familia right? yes. Uh, okay. This coming weekend. We can see what we get to make here. And we'll show you all the family fun you can have at Aquatica. Yes, including showing off their newest ride. And speaking of rides, is it water rides or roller coasters? What do you like better? Mm -hmm. hmm. Choose one. Let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. Yep. And a very young table tennis star is going to a national competition. We are going to be talking to her. Boy, look at her go with that. Jen's got that story. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. So stick around. Okay, we're at 93 right now. 101 this afternoon. 101 oh, Thursday. <laughs> The big time heat this weekend. Uh, if you have outdoor plans this weekend, this is something you want to keep in mind uh, with numbers this high. It is uh, going to be hot through at least Tuesday. My hope is that some things, the pattern changes a little bit by next week, guys. Based on that, there are no outdoor plans this oh, weekend. Oh, man. Brutal. All right. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. Take you back to uh, SA. Mike is making French toast, so let's just hope it doesn't come out to be some kind of Spanish dish before it's all over. <laughs> so, SA Live starts. <laughs> SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, hey there, hi, we're in front of the wave pool at Aquatica, and we're going to show you all the summer fun you can have and show you their latest ride. Plus, the Alamo City should be very proud of this local 12-year-old young gal. See what's happening today that's putting her on the national stage. Feast your eyes. Peach cobbler cupcake with cheesecake baked on the inside or strawberry banana custard on top and cheesecake baked on the inside. You think these look good? Wait till you see the cake we're going to be making. That's coming up on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Wee! Oh, no! oh, I've, never, no! I've never seen Cassie and Ursula on a roller coaster before. And there's Mark Austin. Oh, no! oh, yes, it is SA Live. Oh. And now for the big finish as we come in and at the end of the roller coaster, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the extreme close-up. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Uh, all right, well, you, you know, you rode that coaster all the way in here, but we want to know, what do you like better, roller coasters or water rides? Roller coasters. Roller coasters. I yeah. know. <laughs> and not the ones that whip you around. I like the big, long, you know, with the... You can see it coming, like the, like the uh, Superman. Easy oh, yeah, okay. and, and then over there at SeaWorld, the, uh, the big, long one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, the one that goes like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, that one, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? With, um, so coasters. You like coasters. You. Yeah. You like roller coasters. Not the ones that, like, whip you around. Okay, yeah. all right. So it's a classic roller Only coaster. Only an hour show. All right. <laughs> so we want 
want you to let us know at SLFK <laughs> on Facebook and Twitter. What's better, water Keep slide talking. or roller coaster? Okay. All right. The other thing we want to oh, point out, and, oh. we, and we showed that in the tease about the cupcakes. I want to eat. Um, I know we are, but okay. you know it's going to be a good day when you have two different guests on and they coordinate. Look at we have cupcake strawberry here and then the drinks kind of match. Can you kind of stand right behind that because the, your shirt's pink my shirt, and with my your shirt hair, kind of I mean in. it all kind of works. And the gray hair yep. like that? It yeah, all works. So. <laughs> it okay. all works. Have okay. fun over there. <laughs> all right. Mm. Well, if you, Ooh, cheers yeah, to that, if you good. have an event coming up this summer, our first guest can help with that. She's turned her passion for cooking into a catering business that can create things like a burger bar, pasta station, or even something special for Brunchy Brunch. Yep, Ashley Griggs, owner of Piece of Cake, is here to show us how you can take your next event to the next level with a French toast station. Good yes. afternoon, how are you? Good ya? afternoon, I'm great, thank you. Oh, we are gonna be doing even better because we've got the French toast station basically set up in front of us, right? Yes, you do. Okay, so the secret to good French toast, in case folks missed it earlier, is? It's a good, thick, eggy bread like brioche or challah and it soaks up the custard for the French toast really good. Okay, and your secret to custard is? I use heavy whipping cream, mm -hmm. eggs, brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a few extra little ingredients just to give it a different flavor. Which you won't tell us, right? I sure won't. Thanks so very much for <laughs> <laughs> And you like to do it where you just dip it and, and then flip it over and then pop them in there, right? You don't That's let it correct. get all on the inside? Exactly, because okay. you want it to be able to cook quickly. If it soaks all of that in, it'll take a lot longer to cook. And I feel like just that flash of flavor is really good on there. Okay, and then you get the, the good flavor, the, the good, moist, dense bread in exactly. there too, Exactly, right? okay. yes. And then what have we got over there that we're going to finish off with? Okay, so we have some bananas foster topping with oh. candy pecans and some fresh fruit to go on top. So you can have it either way or you can mix and match whichever you would like. Ooh. I know, he's gonna go for the banana that's foster, right? Yeah, yeah I knew Probably it. So. Okay. <laughs> and then the side to go yes. with this is? Yes. We have some eggs, so we're just gonna do some scrambled eggs for the side. Okay. And you're sticking to scrambled eggs? Mm-hmm. What is it? Um, it's just eggs. I put some heavy whipping cream in there so that the eggs come out fluffy mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt and garlic powder. Now, big question, dry eggs or moist? I like them moist. Okay. I don't like them too dry. Like I like seeing that little bit of liquid on there. So like the Goldilocks yes. of scrambled eggs. Exactly. <laughs> and, yes. and, and the best way to do that is with spatula, right? Is yep, you continually stir it. That's correct. Okay. All right. Mm. How'd you get into uh, doing catering and making French toast bars and all that good stuff? I've honestly loved cooking since I was a kid. And um, I used to get kicked out of the kitchen a lot, if I'm being honest. Um, Somebody kicked you out of the kitchen when you wanted to cook? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been thrilled. Wow, no kidding. <laughs> but no, I, I just really have a passion for it and I love serving people mm -hmm. and letting them see my take on different dishes. What's your favorite thing to make? I love making breakfast, honestly. Yes. I love it. Do you have a favorite breakfast Yeah, dish? I actually do a, a waffle with cheesecake in there. So I make cheesecake oh. bites, cut them up fold it in the waffle batter, and I cook it that way, and then top it with some more cheesecake and drizzled strawberry <laughs> Okay, remember the sentence, mm -hmm. cheesecake cooked in there, because that's gonna be coming up when we talk with Ashley a little bit later on <laughs> as well, so. And right. not just breakfast, not just brunch, right? Oh, no, I offer a wide variety of different foods. Honestly, I just tailor it to whatever people need for their special events or their parties. Okay, so we've got a couple of them that have the, um, bananas foster on there with the candied pecans, and then we are gonna do the strawberries. Do I put the uh, brown sugar on first or afterwards? Uh, the powdered sugar? Or yeah. su powdered sugar. Oh part. no, you're fine. You definitely wanna put that on after. It just okay. gives it a little, a little extra bit flair. Of berries, okay. Yes. So how do folks get you to come do a uh, French toast bar? Form? All they have to do is go on my website and they can fill out a custom quote form. Mm -hmm. and I um, let them know my availability and we go from there. They can tell me any details that they need. And also a burger bar is an option, right? Yes, what, it is. What, what does that setup entail? Um, so basically it's close to this, but I have a griddle that I use and I can do up to nine burgers on that griddle and I make them fresh on the spot for them as well. So there's several different toppings like. and um, bacon jam, um, a garlic aioli. Um, I do pickled onions as well. 
and um, I like to customize it to Texas and do Whataburger ketchup, mayonnaise, yes. and mustard Ooh. to yes. go with it. Yes. <clears throat> okay, all right. And real quickly before we go, you have an event coming up, right? Yes, I do. So this Sunday, I have an event. It's going to be at Upstage Comedy Lounge, 4441 Walls and Road. And it's a karaoke brunch. So this is right on mark with oh, that. Oh, that is so up Mimosas, your alley. Okay, French hold on. toast and karaoke. That's okay. right. It's, What's it's your go-to karaoke song? I like Eric Badu, didn't you know? Okay. Yeah, that's my song right now. Mike, yours? <laughs> Uh, anything that I can remember the words to, oh, but you can read them out there too. So, <laughs> darn, we're out of time. Otherwise, I'd sing. <laughs> uh, it will How about if you like pina colada? No, that's oh a little gosh. hint. What's coming okay. up here? All right, don't forget, you can try a piece of cake for yourself. They're hosting a karaoke <laughs> brunch. Mike may be there Sunday, July 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Upstage Comedy Lounge. For more information, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And we are going to be, like I said, checking out some uh, cheesecake baked inside, something really good, in a little bit later on with, um, with Ashley. So, all right, nationals are underway from the 12-year-old table tennis prodigy for, from Harlandale High School. Yes, we shared Leah Morales' story a few months back, and right now she's working hard going head-to-head -head with some of the best in the country. We're always rooting for you, Leah, and our Jen Tobias Strusky has her story. She's number four. In Texas, number one, so that's, that's really big. Leah Morales, just 12 years old, is dominating what's known as the most popular indoor sport in the world. All the kids that come in the gym look up to her, and all the whenever we travel in Houston, Austin for tournaments, all the kids kind of like look up how she plays. The Harlandale Middle School sixth grader caught on to the game at Mission Branch Library in 2019 during a visit with her dad to cool off from the Texas heat. I heard the sound of it and it just kind of like, it was so quiet in the library. So I just, I heard this like noise of like a ball hitting a table. So I was like, I wanted to tell my dad like, let's go try it. And then I picked up the racket and I just like fell in love with the sport. And we let Leah hit with one person and the person's like, wow, she's pretty good. I think that she can, she's got potential, it's like just by the way she was hitting. So then we, they introduced us to uh, Vlad, which is uh, the president, and he's her coach, and he's from Romania. He's also an excellent table tennis player, and um, he just kind of like enjoyed um, the passion that she had for it. And she hasn't looked back. Move forward two years later, she's training at the San Antonio Tennis Club with her coach, Vlad Farkas. We kind of can say we got lucky to have somebody like Leah join our club, you know, because it's, it's, it's pretty hard. Yeah, we have the knowledge to do it, but it also needs to be come from the kid and from the parents. I always feel the people who enjoy it the most, they'll always come here the earliest and be here the latest. And I just... <laughs> She loves it so much. If it was up to Leah, she'd want to live in that room up there. Right? <laughs> For the longest time, Leah was the only girl and the only child playing here at her level. But her parents knew Leah was set on getting better. So they drove from the south side to this club, sometimes six days out of the week. Within the past six months, I've already changed it. We're, we're doing Monday through Thursday training, mm -hmm. and we get Friday, Saturday, Sunday as family time. You know, nice. I get to go yes. to the Rockport or anywhere to just get away for a little bit. Yeah. Somewhere where I don't hear what you hear in the background. <laughs> I'm grateful to have parents like them, but it's not all parents are like willing to drive every day, especially like from how far away the club is from our house. The sport is based on a rating level. Leah is at 2,000, but she started at 300 just two years ago. Here's what that means. Well, the 2,600, 2,700 are Olympic level. Like if you're already 2,000, it means that you have that potential. If you're 2,000 when you're 12, then you have that potential yeah. to go up. So in G early July, national team trials. Mm -hmm. So I want to be like the first San Antonian ever to make a national team. And then long term, I would say Olympic. She's probably representing the south side of San Antonio and San Antonio, of course, all San Antonio. But to know that she's at Hardendale Middle and she's a, an all-A student, I'm very proud of that because it doesn't matter. Nothing really matters. If you want it, you're going to go and get it. It makes me feel very, like, proud of myself, you know, like, to where I've gotten good enough to where people can look up to me. It makes me feel very good inside. Does and that drag you more? Yeah, that inspires me to, like, keep going. 
having something that you enjoy so much, like it gives me something to look forward to. And before, like I found table tennis, I was just kind of like searching for what I could do and what I love. But when I found table tennis, I feel like I just like filled in like that empty gap that I had. So. For Resi Live. If she happens to make the U.S. The, the juniors team, she would be the first San Antonian ever to do it in this sport. I'm Jen Tobias Trusky. That is just that amazing. I know. Every time I see her, I mean, just, I know. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, her dad tells us she's had some, obviously, some really tough losses, some good wins, too. And no matter what, she's looking to bounce back really, really strong. And mind you, some of these table tennis pros have been playing, and we were just talking about yeah. this, since they were like four or five years four. old. So, yeah. Wow. Leah, we are all the best. I mean, the whole city is rooting for you. So, way to go. Represent yes. San Antonio. All right, still ahead on the show. Summer, of course, is just getting started. We check out Aquatica and how it can help you cool you off all summer long. But first, if you like pina colada, oh my gosh, again. Where, <laughs> you can get a cool and different <laughs> creamy pina colada creation all in one place. Well, actually, three different places. We're gonna tell you all about it coming up. It's gonna be in my head all day. <laughs>